Snipers fray when things go wrong in the hangar. Wrong band numbers. Wrong aircraft. Put your bags over there. Customs find bags full of unusual contraband. It's organic. And work begins on a billion dollar runway construction project, one of the most ambitious the world has ever seen. The bar is getting higher and higher and higher. Dubai International Airport, the busiest global hub on the planet and aiming to stay there. Clear for takeoff. But perfection is never easy. It's not finished, it's supposed to be finished. More planes to service. Can we open the number three engine? More situations to deal with. What do you mean, live snakes? Oh, sorry. More smugglers to stop. This is the heroin here. And massive engineering projects to complete on time. It's non-stop. 24-7. Hey! Hey! Everything is time, time, time. It's the job of 90,000 staff from all over the world to make this the ultimate airport. Dubai International Airport is a vast, complex machine. From check-in to baggage handling, from aircraft engineering to airside operations, everything is interconnected. A small, localized problem can quickly ripple out across the airport, turning into a big one that puts everyone under pressure. Air traffic control must keep the planes moving, flying in and out of the airport on schedule. But tonight, Dubai Tower has a situation unfolding that could cause serious complications. A plane that's just landed from Kuwait may be on fire. A ground control request uh, ground vehicle to approach. We have some smoke coming from our left landing gear. MSA the fire services has been alerted there on the way. Temperature is still rising on the left side, and smoke still coming. So we have roughly 300 uh, passengers on board. That the fire brigade needs to be out there to make sure that passenger safety is taken care of. Phil Marquez is in charge of Dubai's air traffic control. It's kind of critical that they get there pretty quickly. The aircraft's pilot is reporting that the hydraulics on one of his left brakes may be leaking. If it's a hydraulic leak, the system's pressurized. With the heat from the brakes of just landing a 777, uh, it could start a fire. Advice to the pilot, uh, shut down the engine, please. MS 858, you copy. Uh, they're requesting you to shut down the engine. Okay, we'll shut down the left engine. In this case, there is smoke, but no fire. Now, engineers must find out what went wrong. The aircraft's now being towed to the stand. Um, the fire service is still with the aircraft just to make sure that everything's OK. At the terminal, aircraft engineer Tariq Naim has been put on high alert. We are worried. Our ground staff is worried. Everybody's anxiously waiting for that aircraft to come in. Tariq can be called on to make emergency repairs to any one of the 223 planes in Emirates' fleet. Normally it comes in under its own power. So as a precaution, he has switched off the engines earlier. We don't take any risks. After an initial inspection, the passengers disembark. Nice okay. You. See you. Okay. And the flight crew can clock off. Yeah, that's now officially our aircraft because this is transferred from the captain to the engineer. Flight off to engineer. No chances can be taken with an aircraft's brakes, so this plane will be taken out of service until the fault is investigated and fixed. But Tarek can't do that here at the gate. Prepare the hangers for the arrival, please. Before he can even start to fix it, he faces a major challenge. He has to get it across a live runway between planes taking off at speeds of over 200 miles per hour. 
To keep the airport running like a well-oiled machine, the 182,000 passengers who use it each day must be moved through as quickly as possible. But for those coming into Dubai, there's one thing that can instantly bring their journey to a standstill. Excuse me? Just get your bags over there. Customs officer Hassan Ibrahim must make sure that none of these incoming passengers are carrying illegal smuggled goods. This all for you? Oh, one no, person? No, 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 no. Want to know each one how, how much you have with them? It's a personal or for trading or what? Customs officers everywhere are on the lookout for drugs. But here in Dubai, they also need to be able to spot a whole range of unusual and exotic contraband. Yeah. But I don't know whether it's OK or not. So you have a piece of home, yeah? It's a decoration. Yeah, it's a decoration. <laughs> it's OK or not, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it's OK, no problem. Oh. <laughs> a flight has just arrived from India, and Hassan's been called to investigate two passengers with a suspect bag. OK, just excuse me. Let's put your bags over there. Customs scanners have revealed it's full of some kind of plant material. I uh, look in uh, to the bag of the passengers. It shows here it's or organic. It's giving this orange color. And now we'll go there and we'll see if he declared it or not. Hassan needs to look inside the passengers' bags to investigate what the mysterious organic material might be. How are you? you speak English, yeah? Yeah. Okay. So, uh-huh. And why you brought this? Yeah, from India, but why you brought it? For a company? Yeah. Gift? Yeah, I agree. Ah, you, you brought it as a gift? Yeah. Uh-huh. OK. The bag is stuffed full of wood chips, but not just any old wood chips. So the bag is full of wood, nothing else, no personal things, nothing. Oud is the most expensive wood in the world. Used to make luxury cologne here in the Middle East, this bag alone could be worth up to 50,000 US dollars. But it's an endangered species and its trade is regulated. So the passengers will need to show a permit or their bag will be confiscated. Out on the stand, aircraft engineer Tariq prepares to push back the disabled 777 so it can be towed across the live runway to the hangar. Back leg, push back, face, waist to bottom. Here we go, finally. It's a very crucial time. We have that small time bracket which the tower gives us to cross that runway. Looks like the aircraft's ready to cross the runway now. The controller has to make sure that uh, he's got an appropriate gap. At a towing speed of just over 11 miles per hour, it should take this 777 12 seconds to cross the runway. With just three minutes between planes, there's no room for error. Stalling on a live runway would be a disaster. You have to be very, very careful, follow the instructions very carefully and precisely. Because on the other side, we can see those two aeroplanes landing and we are crossing this live runway. This is the green light for us, so we have crossed the runway now. The team here handled it really well. Hopefully the aircraft gets uh, back up and running soon. Tarek has got the plane across the runway without a hitch. But now he needs to get it into the hangar, which is more hazardous than it sounds. There's less than eight feet clearance on either side of that multi-million dollar tail fin. It's really very, very precise. We need to get this aircraft right in the right place. In aircraft, even if we get a small scratch, that will cost us 48 hours, which might be translated into 10 million of dollars. Some precision parking and the plane is in. We are in final position? No, uh, Okay, I'm setting the parking brakes. Bit of a relief finally, coming inside the hangar. No time to rest, no time to take a break now. Tarek gets straight on to inspecting that faulty brake. That's a brake which was leaking. 
Like in a Formula One car, this plane's brakes are made of carbon. On touchdown, as they bring 260 tons of passenger jet to a stop, they can heat up to 1800 degrees Fahrenheit. The hydraulic fluid fell over the hot brake. It has produced some smoke. Because of that smoke which Captain saw, the fire uh, services and everything came over to the, the aircraft. We had 12 brakes, and out of those 12 brakes, this was one brake, and on each brake, we have eight pistons. And it's one of those eight pistons which was slightly leaking. Just one leaking piston out of 96 has taken this plane out of service, and it could have a knock-on effect for the whole fleet. In aviation, time is money. This aircraft has to make that uh, next departure on time. If it is delays by three minutes or more than that, that need to be justified, that need to be answered. You want to see the certificate or some papers? At customs, Officer Hassan has stopped two passengers with a bag of valuable endangered oud bark. No problem, there's nothing here. Can you check it please again in your bag? So you bring us this paper. Okay, well, this, my friend. This is normal uh, paper and invoice. My friend, we need another certificate, not that one. Do you have it? Okay, okay. Until the, un until the time you bring it, we'll confiscate your wood. Their $50,000 bag of wood is seized. Open, please. But the Indian passengers have two more bags with them. It's also wood, and also here. <clears throat> These bags will be impounded too. You see? All up, Hassan has found 90 pounds of oud bark, a haul that's worth a small fortune. Okay, this piece, come with me. Just put it on your trolley. After it's been cleaned and added some liquids and, uh, and some uh, perfume, maybe it will reach above the 100,000 US dollar. For the two passengers from India, it's been a very costly day. But with a global oud market worth up to 8 billion US dollars every year, for many, the smuggling of this protected species is worth the risk. I believe that uh, this oud has been uh, sold in the black market. I think it's a good catch. If the passengers don't come back with the right paperwork, their oud will become government property and can be sold or destroyed. Every 92 seconds round the clock, a flight lands or takes off from one of Dubai International's two runways. The world's heaviest passenger plane lands here more frequently than anywhere else and the constant pummeling is taking its toll, threatening Dubai's number one position. But it won't be giving up its title without a fight. We're always working towards making Dubai the best airport in the world, the best connection between East and West. Suzanne Al-Anani has one of the most powerful and high-profile jobs in Dubai. As the airport's engineering CEO, she manages a multi-million dollar budget and a workforce of thousands. In just six weeks' time, her team will begin the complete overhaul of both runways back to back. For almost three months, Dubai will be down to a single runway. The operation and reputation of the world's busiest global hub and its engineering chief will be on the line. You never have in any airport in the world, you have you know, especially at two runway airports, one runway closes and then it is open, followed by another closure immediately. It's the first time ever in the world, you know, never happened before. The bar is getting higher and higher and higher. So it's always testing you and your capabilities. Today, Suzanne's ordered a trial runway closure to test her team's readiness. How do you know it's closed? Because they are already there. We have received the information. Okay. And they are already there. They are setting up the equipment. All right. This one is not coming towards us? Hopefully not. <laughs> 
Yusuf Pizada is her project manager. He'll be in charge of 5,000 people working 24-7 in temperatures of up to 120 degrees. It will be the biggest project of his career. I can say that this is a unique work which is uh, happening. I haven't heard anything like it anywhere in the world. The work is critical. A small imperfection could cause a huge problem for a landing aircraft. It looks so irregular here. Yes. Can you feel it, yes. the undulations? Our problem is basically these cracks. Yeah. If we don't repair it now, these cracks will keep on opening. Once a crack appears, a structural crack, the whole structure doesn't, doesn't act as one structure. It weakens. And if this weakens, we never know how it's going to behave to the load at the touchdown. Uh, it might cause yeah. imbalance uh, in, 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 in the aircraft, you know, when, when it touches down. God forbid, we don't know what disaster is going to cause. It can come up. Yeah. It can be sucked uh, in the yeah, engine. Yeah. This is the area we are repairing, a very bad area. The construction team has until 7 p.m. sharp to resurface 360 feet of runway. Today's performance will reveal the scale of the task ahead when they resurface all two and a half miles of it. This is about a four-hour operation for the pad. Okay. So far, so good. The old asphalt is being cut out and the section stripped back to its concrete base. This milling machine eats it up at a rate of eight cubic yards a minute. Once the asphalt is removed, the area needs to be surgically cleaned. Finish up, get the cleaning up, yeah. finished off. Make sure there's no dust yeah. or debris on. Yeah. But um, if you have any dust or debris, the DAC coat won't, won't take properly, and then you're able to get the, the new asphalt lifting off. The contractors need to work quickly but must not damage vital runway infrastructure like lights and signals. But Yusuf's worried that because of the pressure, they've brought far too many workers on site and they're getting in each other's way. Who is in charge here? Only people who are uh, related to this activity should stay there. All of them can go away. But it's not safe. There's just six and a half hours left to lay the asphalt and let it cool. Suzanne's keeping a close watch. If her team can't do this small job in time, it will be bad news for the main refurbishment. We are committed. Yeah. We can or we can't, what's happened? I don't want anything to hinder the progress of what we have committed to. South runway, North runway, so whatever. You know, facilitation and enabling has to be done. No failure. Yes. No failure. The 777 that came in during the night from Kuwait with a leaking brake is still in the hangar for repair. A new shift of engineers have taken over the job. Anybody check on the other side? Check the other side. No, 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 it's okay. It's okay. At the moment, because of uh, the leak, we need to confirm that it's only isolated to only one brake. Oswald, you're removing this. Aircraft engineer Nizalman Rahman is in charge of getting this plane back in the air safely and on time. So we'll jack up both together at the same time. No chances can be taken with aircraft safety. Okay, put it, put it at the back. So this $125,000 brake assembly will be replaced. But first, they need to get it off. Starting with the single pin that holds the brake on. Stuck. Okay, move the pin out. Knock the pin out. That's why it's not coming out. This is stuck because of the heat and because of the leak. So it's just jammed up now. Go. Don't need my hand. Huh? Bringing a fully loaded passenger jet to a stop after touchdown has put this carbon brake under extreme pressure. Compared to a car, maximum car will have about 100 psi, that's it. 
the brake pressure going through the piston is about 3,000 psi when it's at maximum uh, pressure. So it can stop uh, the aircraft within uh, 500 meters. Now they've finally got the old brake assemblage off, it's time to put the new one on, which should be a straightforward job. Wait, wait, it's the wrong brake. The wrong part, I'm just gonna see. Wrong aircraft. The ER brake. This brake is meant for the 300 ER, where on this is a 300. Between the shifts, there's been a mix up, and Nizzleman's been sent a brake for a different model of 777. No one wants to be the guy who sent an aircraft out late. They need to get the correct part quickly. Yeah, one quantity one, please. All right. Make it will collect or deliver very urgent. It's extra annoying to have the wrong part uh, to be delivered to us to be fitted on the aircraft because now we are wasting more time to get the right part. Time is money. Aircraft on the ground doesn't make any money. Nizzleman sends an engineer to make sure they get the right part this time. And that should be easy, because Dubai International has one of the largest aviation part stores on the planet, holding spares for all the aircraft in Emirates' fleet. At the touch of a button, more than six million parts can be called up from whole engines down to the tiniest screw. $1.7 billion of kit on standby to make sure aircraft aren't on the ground for a second longer than they need to be. 440 pounds of new brake is collected and delivered back to the hangar. Yeah, this is the right part for the aircraft. Lift it up, lift it up. Okay, go up. Okay. Release. Okay, that's it. The longest brake change ever. Close to an hour. Not not average standard. Okay, go. We are very happy at the moment, but still we have one more uh, action to be done to, uh, to do an investigation why did the wrong brick came to us and we need to ensure that this will not happen again. This 777 leaves the hangar with all 12 brakes fully operational, all 96 pistons intact and a clean bill of health to fly. Every day, 470 long-haul flights land at Dubai, carrying 282,000 gallons of waste. Turnaround times are tight, and getting a seemingly small thing like emptying toilets wrong could mean delays in getting those planes back in the air. How are you? All well? Night shift? Morning. Morning. OK. Service delivery officer Wilson Anthony has just 30 minutes to turn around the aircraft ready for its next flight. No issues? Happy? OK, get on to your job. This A380 has just arrived from Australia. It has 20 onboard toilets, and on every long-haul flight, nearly 600 gallons of waste accumulates in its sewage tanks. That's two and a half tons of the stuff. We don't carry it to servicing and then uh, when the flight is airborne, you go to the loo and you find that it is blocked. We don't, have all, we don't want that to happen and uh, it may cost us very dearly. That is the drain point. This guy will be connecting this hose there and from there he will be draining out the complete aircraft waste. And then with this is a hose by which we recharge and rinse the tank with the aircraft disinfectant. We have a total of four aircraft tanks, waste tanks. Those are interconnected and draining is from the single point. Over one litre of waste is sucked out every second. It takes 25 minutes to complete the job. It smells, but can't help. Somebody has to do it. We got a dedicated team. They are given an allowance of 300 dirhams extra. 
what the others, other operators generally get. And they're also vaccinated yearly uh, so that they, attend, uh, they are uh, immune from any disease. That's 80 extra dollars to do this dirty but essential job. And when it's called for, Wilson and his team go above and beyond the call of duty. Once or twice in a year it happens that the customer drops a very valuable thing into the toilet. We had a case wherein a lady lost her diamond ring. It was an engagement ring. He had to route an empty truck to drain out the entire aircraft waste. We got it and then the truck was taken to an isolated place where we had to actually throw it out in the open and a person had to slit it manually with his hand to retrieve the diamond ring. This A380's tanks have now been drained. The waste is driven off site, and Wilson's part in this turnaround is complete. I got all my servicing done on, my, on time, and I'm happy that the plane will depart on time. I done my part. The north runway has now been closed for two hours. 200 construction workers race to get the resurfacing finished for the runway to reopen at 7 p.m. sharp. Today is a dress rehearsal for the much bigger runway closure, so Yusuf's anxious to get it right. People who are not just involved, say, I think let, let them get rid of them. I've already it's pushed everyone away from that machine. It's not safe. Too much confusion. Too many people, too many foremen. Worksite discipline is crucial because in just six weeks, Yusuf will have 5,000 workers out here resurfacing the whole runway and they'll be working within yards of aircraft landing and taking off. You have to be very careful because you don't want to do anything which will impact the only operational runway in the airport. Finally, at nine minutes past two, the first layer of asphalt goes on. The paver lays the top layer, which has been heated to above 300 degrees so it can be rolled perfectly flat. They will continue rolling for uh, probably an hour or 45 minutes. This is a race against the clock. We have to complete the work as soon as possible. It needs to be below 175 degrees before it's hard enough for aircraft to land safely. It has to really cool down before we open it for traffic. So this is important. I'd like to keep an eye on this. The runway must open again in just a few hours. Now, all they can do is wait and hope they've done the work in time. T3 is the largest airport terminal in the world. The size of 160 football pitches. Go straight through security, upstairs, into the central area. Airport services manager Mel Sabawal and her team must make sure that every passenger makes their way from the 158 check-in counters to the 48 departure gates on time. Hello. In the afternoon, we've got around 9,000 transit and around 7,000 joining passengers. That's 16,000 passengers Mel has to contend with in a single afternoon. If just one of them goes missing, it could delay a flight's departure and disrupt the whole Emirates network. What we're currently doing now is going through all the flights, making sure that everything's OK in terms of boarding processes. I think we'll head off to EK61, which is Hamburg. before the Hamburg flight closes its gate, Mel arrives to check everything is running smoothly. Uh, oh, my sweet home, yeah? Yeah. All the best. Thank you See very you, sir. much. Enjoy your flight, my lady. How are you doing? Good afternoon, sir. How are you doing? Excuse me, sir. Where was the last place you saw your son? Boarding is well underway, but Mel has spotted a passenger in distress. What's he wearing? OK. Is he on his own? Yeah. But he's 15 years old. So oh, okay. Uh, we've got a young boy missing, 15 years old. The father is extremely worried, so we're just going to have a quick look to see if we can see him. Did he go off to do any shopping or anything? Mm. 
Do you have a contact number for him? No. He's wearing a white T-shirt. What well, else, sir? And black, black pants. Black pants? The missing boy could be anywhere in the terminal's 38 bars and restaurants, 25 shops, or three vast duty-free areas. The best thing to do in situations like this is to take the parent along with us and try and see if we can locate them in various areas of duty-free. If they don't find him soon, father and son could be offloaded from their flight and they'll be stung for the cost of another one. But right now, Mel's more concerned the family is reunited. We've got 10 minutes to play with. The main thing is he's 15 years old, the parent is absolutely distraught and wants to look for him, so that's the priority for now. 10 minutes to search a concourse more than half a mile long, holding up to 5,000 people. One way to ensure your departure from Dubai runs smoothly is to pay for a service where every little thing is taken care of for you. So I would like to not have any traffic happening around this area. Can you check? At Al Majlis, Najla Al Midfa works to make sure flying from Dubai is a stress-free experience for her elite VIPs. This here. Um, I have to check about those two cars, but make sure that anyone. Just. Al Majlis handles the airport's elite passengers. We really cater to a very uh, selective segment in the society. Uh, let it be the royal family, uh, celebrities, and uh, all important business people around the world. Uh, we make sure to offer them the best service. Najla and her team may rub shoulders with royalty and celebrity every day, but she's particularly excited about today's passenger and a little nervous. So, uh, is the crew aware about Pelé, the f famous football player? Yes. Very uh, all good. All details and all information very good. about passengers Excellent. arriving here. I'm very excited to meet Pelé today. Uh, my dad was a big fan of Pelé, and um, it's like a dream coming true to meet him face to face. There's first class, and then there's Al Majlis, where passengers relax in their own private lounge, while staff cater to their every wish. Is the uh, team ready for the yeah, food and good. beverages? Yes, everything's ready. Okay, good. I actually like to go by myself and check all the lounges and uh, the preparation for any celebrity before they enter the lounge. We'll be using this lounge for the famous football player. Okay. Can we have an air freshener? Can you call the cleaner, please? Dubai International is always on show, and everything must be perfect. Here at El Majlis, there's no detail too small. If he wishes to switch on the TV, then that's his preference. But we don't want it to be noisy when he comes in. So when he comes in, please just ask him what would he prefer to drink, not just bring anything automatically. Being chauffeured directly to the plane is all part of the service. But he's going to be going into this car, so I just want to check. Mm. Please, can we just have it, the carpet? I get very disappointed because, after all, the cars, they reflect the image of El Majlis, and um, I would want to always maintain the best standard. Now, all Majla can do is wait nervously for her footballing hero to arrive. I just want to ask him one question, one personal question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What are you going to ask him? I want to ask him whenever he... Uh, when he gets a goal, does he know that he's going to get a goal before he gets the goal? Does he feel it? But Pele is running late, so she may not get the chance to ask him. Can we check with the contact of the driver? No? Do we have a contact? Okay, he's checking. If he doesn't arrive soon, the plane will depart without him. At an airport as busy as Dubai International, there's no extra time, not even for famous footballers. Inside the terminal, another passenger is getting dangerously close to missing his flight. 
Airport services manager Mel is still scouring more than 100,000 square feet of shops for the missing boy who's due to depart on a flight to Hamburg. Zach? Any luck? That feeling as a parent that your child is missing, it's, uh, it's scary. Thank you very much. How are you? How's it going? Time is running out for the missing boy. Duty manager Mustafa Barouche is preparing to close the gate. Passengers to Hamburg, please. Final call. Hamburg, final call, please. But the lost teenager is not the only passenger that's gone astray. I have seven minutes. 20, 39 passengers. I need to have seven minutes to finish all. If they don't report to the gate in time, they'll be left behind. With just minutes to spare, the missing boy turns up at the gate on his own. Feel better? Yeah. He's at the gate. Oh, reunited. He's a little tear to the eye. Okay, all the best. Thank you. Mel may have found her passenger, but Mustafa's still missing some of his. Two. Missing two. Two reporters. Missing five. Two reporters. Oh, so we're not over. No, not yet. Oh, okay. But you said it was over. Oh, that's what I heard. Thanks. Just going to check, double check in the system. If they're transit passengers, Mel should be able to find out which gate they arrived at. That flight arrived in Concourse A at 11:55 this morning, so they should be within the terminal somewhere. Gate should be closed now in exactly one minute. 26 Hotel and one Nine business. Minutes. Yep. Business has reported. So missing two. Okay, one more deal, yeah. Now okay. she has okay. a dilemma. She doesn't want her passengers to miss their flight, but she can't let them delay it. I think the best thing to do at this stage is to see where the baggage is located, the bags. Mel has to gamble on what she thinks will cause the least delay offload the bags, which will take at least 10 minutes, or let the bags go on and hope the passengers turn up. The bag container should be yeah. on ground, so the offloading should be pretty quick in terms of baggage being taken off the aircraft. Um, we're going to have to close the gate. Decision taken. Mel orders the bags to be offloaded. So close the gate. Hello? You got them? Yeah. Okay, boarding over. Excellent. Okay, bring them down. Thank you. Darush, boarding over. The passengers have just made it in the nick of time. Yep, yeah, they're here. Yes. <laughs> Ignore the floating and board the, all the containers. They and their bags will be going to Hamburg after all. They may not realize just how close they came to being left behind. Approximately 30 seconds and they wouldn't have made it. Thank you. Let's just see this off, Mr. Parker, because you did such a good job. Yes, there it goes. Rolling yes. on time. Very happy. Well done. Oh. Big time relief. Seriously. With all this sweat, it's worth it. Right, so ready for the next one? That's it. <laughs> At Dubai Airport's VIP service, manager Najla is waiting nervously for footballing legend Pele to arrive. Any minutes. He's running half an hour late. Planes don't wait for VIPs either. If Pele doesn't show up soon, he's going to be shown a red card. Al Majlis has 22 staff on duty, each with a specific job to do, to make sure that when he does arrive, his every possible need is catered for. So I need one guy to open the door for the car, and two will be stand by here for uh, luggage, okay? Okay, yeah. yeah. And tell please the AKFC staff to prepare hot towels. Yeah, just when he comes here. Finally, the famous footballer is here. 
morning. Good morning. Hello, Hello. Mr. How Penny. You? How are you? Good. Nice good. to meet you. Good. Good. Welcome. Nice to you again. We are very happy to have you in Dubai. <laughs> But you're, you're such a legend, uh, you know, my parents and everyone, they talk very highly about you. So my father was a big fan. Big responsibility. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right. So, uh, Abdul Majid, please. Can we have the uh, documents and the passport collection? Please uh, relax, Mr. Pele. Please relax. Because Pele was late, Najla has just 20 minutes to make sure his bags are checked in and his passport is processed. So she's going to passport control to personally make sure it's all done in time. Hello. Okay, good, okay. This is one of the benefits of using El Majlis is to not feel the pressure of walking and doing all the paperwork. We do it on their behalf while they eat and relax in their lounges with privacy and just chat with their friends. In the excitement of the moment, Najla forgot to ask Pele her burning question. I felt very um, overwhelmed, that's the word. My panic is my hand. Where I, I wanted to take a picture of yeah. <laughs> He's such a humble guy. Pele needs to leave for his plane in a few minutes. If Najla wants to ask her question, this is her last chance. <laughs> Mr. Pele, I have a question. Yes. yes. <laughs> uh, whenever you score the goal, do you know that you're going to score a goal before? Not all the time. And then sometimes you think going to do the goal, then the ball hit the post. No, 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 no goal. It's time for Pele to be sent off to the plane. As a girl, I played football like Pele. <laughs> yes? What position do you play? I like to uh, forward. forward. Yes, I like to score. I don't like to be the good. In this VIP service, you get something even first-class passengers can only dream of. A chauffeured car directly to the plane door, just in time for departure. Good job, team. Good job. With the runway reopening fast approaching, engineering boss Suzanne wants to know if the asphalt has cooled enough for aircraft to land safely. Warm. You can feel the temperature. How do we reassure that this is serviceable now? The temperature is uh, less than 80 degrees. OK, who's measuring? We measured it. When they left, it was uh, 50, 55. Okay. Can we get the materials engineer just before we, we, do this. Before yes. we yes. leave, yes. you know, for record's sake? Today's job is done, but the closure has been an eye-opener. And with her neck on the line, Suzanne's keen that lessons are learned fast before the double closure in just six weeks' time. There has to be one leader and, you know, a person responsible for, for all what is going on. From what we have seen today, there were a lot of nervous people around, and uh, they, they contributed to, to more stress. Too many people were here. Yeah. Which were not required. List all your findings uh, from, from you know, the exercise we have done today, and we will have a meeting with the contractor. Every day will be a challenge. Actually, Every day. Definitely. Every day. It's 7 p.m. With the repair complete, the north runway is up and running again. It's a job done, but uh, it could have been done a little bit uh, more efficiently. The airport is now able to handle over 1,000 aircraft movements 24 hours a day.